Well, hi, my name is Zane Fisher. I'm the owner of Extraordinary Structures, and this is our Saltbox Tiny House. Saltbox is a, it's a vernacular New England style of roof, and although we're out here in New Mexico, the defining feature is that it's an asymmetrical roof line. At this point in time, you have that kind of asymmetrical peak roof. It's usually referred to as a saltbox. In our case, we did it both for sort of architectural flair, and also so that one side of the house would have exactly the right length for a standard solar panel. So the roof is set up to take a whole bunch of solar. So this is our kitchen. What we do is we like to do a single core um, sort of plumbing infrastructure wall so that your bathroom and kitchen are back to back, minimizing the amount of plumbing. And we're also using that to bias the weight inside the trailer for the best hauling characteristics. But we want it kind of luxury too. One of the things that bugs me when I visit tiny houses is if they've got a sink that's too small because I, I do a lot of cooking personally. So we want to have a nice big sink. Um, so this is bigger than you can have in, in some apartments. And then we have a sort of a diverse cooking ecosystem here from a, a convection toaster oven to a two burner induction. But you could outfit this with a, a larger refrigerator and more of a standard stove and oven. But these are the options that we chose for this one. And we used a single piece um, stainless steel unit here. This fridge is a drawer. There's a drawer situation right here. So it just fits right into the uh, counter. It's small, but it's very efficient. Lots of drawers, lots of storage. In fact, I sometimes think there's too much storage in this place. I think it's adaptable to any person's particular sort of needs, and you can really make it home. So the bathroom is, um, you know, it's bound to be small, right? It's in a tiny house like this, but we wanted a different characteristic. We have sort of a Scandinavian wood cabin style interior going on. We wanted to sort of, you know, create a whole different environment. So we've got this bright white acrylic in here, which gives you a, a sort of a modern flair, but that's um, tempered with the same mesquite floors and then this deep um, cedar Japanese Ofuro style soaking tub. My partner Catherine built this um, as a, a little piece of luxury in a small room. So. A bit of luxury and some brightness um, helps to make a small bathroom a lot more livable. This is a composting unit here, Swedish style. Yeah, this unit um, doesn't currently have holding tanks on it right now. So what you would do is either tie it into a septic or depending on your location, uh, use a gray water system or add a tank. If, for example, like this unit will end up spending its life probably in New Mexico, um, you can do gray water, but your kitchen water is considered black water. So what we have pre-installed in the kitchen sink is a valve. So you could direct it to a tank, or if you're not using food, you could direct it to a gray water system. We like to avoid lofts whenever possible. They're enjoyable, but we, in a small space, we don't want to put too much weight up above or, or um, take up the nice airspace. But over the bathroom is a natural place to have a small loft. Can sleep up there, or a kid can sleep up there, a guest, or I think of it as kind of a reading nook. And we just have a ladder permanently mounted on the wall for a quick climb up there. And it turns out it's a nice space. A little reading light and a little outlet up there makes it pretty livable. The primary bed, we're using a horizontal Murphy, um, our wall bed system. So it just comes down right here. So what we do is we move this little fold the rocker out of the way, and our furniture actually rolls, so we can move it to the side, right? Bring it up here. And this guy is what actually ends up supporting your bed, um, so that they're not in your way when you get out of bed in the middle of the night. You don't end up kicking the, the furniture here. You've got a little reading light, outlets at bed height, then you're right next to the window. So for me, this is more enjoyable than a loft. What we do here at Extraordinary Structures is a panelized construction system. We do a computer model of anything that we're gonna build, we break it into component sections. And then we use a CNC router or an automated system to carve out those panels in precise shapes and lock them together, kind of like the Legos for big kids or something like that. So in this unit, you can see um, the joints here, where each two-foot wide panel connects to the next one. So once we've designed a structure, it actually assembles quite quickly. This little stove it was invented for marine applications out of the Seattle area, so for um, fishing crews going out early um, who want to warm up. And it, it's a super efficient burn in a very small package. Um, so that's why we like this. So um, it's really in here is kind of showing off that there's room for luxury, even in a small space. Primary heating and cooling in this unit is done with a mini-split. So you don't actually need heat, um, but it's uh, you know, pretty nice, especially in the winter, get back from a day of um, skiing or snowshoeing or just hard work and be able to light up a little fire. And it adds that something special that makes you feel like um, tiny house living is luxury rather than uh, something that you're giving something up for. Is there anything you wish you would have done differently with this build? Uh, there are some small things, um, just in the ways we've, reconfig we've configured some of the drawers. So um, I think we've changed some ideas about that. Um, we've learned some lessons about how to run infrastructure in the most optimal ways, especially if we're not building a whole unit for someone or if we're providing a shell, which is something that we do, how to make sure that it can work really well for electrical and plumbing trades. Part of that is the tiny configuration, and part of that is um, is using a panelized construction system like you. Overall, I think we're pretty happy. You know, we've, we've got um, other floor plans that we're working on that are different, but this one has a lot of versatility in it for us. Where do you see the future of this? Do you see this as something that uh, is going to be progressing for for many years to come, or do you see this as something where it's going to be a niche, small market that's always been there, but now they're starting to become more aligned with the thought process of the tiny home living? Yeah, I, well, you know, I think that there, there are components of it that are probably niche but I think the, the idea of smaller, sort of smarter, energy-efficient spaces, uh, a little more minimal, um, especially for people who um, realize that they don't need much, but they place a high value on maybe resources that are shared in a community or open space or wilderness, um, I, I think it's going to continue um, to branch out. So I see it um, as we work through zoning issues, I see it having a pretty um, large impact on, uh, on cities where we see prices escalating out of control and um, a need for higher densities, but in different form factors. Um, and I, I see it as a, a way to add to a sort of healthy housing ecosystem overall as we move forward. So um, I think there's a place for it. And as we see, um, you know, we're doing a panelized system that allows for a sort of rapid assembly. And there are other people out there who are not just building small, but also innovating in the housing construction area. Um, and so to see companies coming up like that is exciting. And I think those are going to be